Hello, and welcome to the Feeling Good Podcast, where you can learn powerful techniques to change the way you feel. I am your host, Dr. Rhonda Borowski, and joining me here in the Murrieta studio is Dr. David Burns. Dr. Burns is a pioneer in the development of cognitive behavioral therapy and the creator of the new Teen Therapy. He is the author of Feeling Good, which has sold over 5 million copies in the United States and has been translated into over 30 languages. His latest book, Feeling Great, contains powerful new techniques that make rapid recovery possible for many people struggling with depression and anxiety. Dr. Burns is currently an emeritus adjunct professor of clinical psychiatry at Stanford University School of Medicine. Hello, Rhonda. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, David, and welcome, everyone, to episode 235. We've had a long series of podcasts on the five secrets, and this is another one. And today is going to be super cool because we have um, a wonderful man, Brian Wright, who has um, been working with David online through email. They've been emailing each other, and he's done a lot of reading of David's work, and he has been implementing the five secrets with his with his wife, and he's going to talk to us about his experience. So yes, and it's, it's – hey. it, welcome, Brian, and it's a near impossible Thank feat you. what Brian has accomplished. He's the first human being, in fact <laughs> – to succeed in learning the five secrets of effective communication and implementing it skillfully on on your own. So we're very excited to to talk to you, and I'm filled with admiration and amazement. Thank you, David. Yeah, I thought I'd read, I thought I'd read a, um, an endorsement about the five secrets. Someone sent you an endorsement recently about an old podcast, podcast 62, which is on five secrets of effective communication and psychotherapy homework. And Ed just wrote you simply, definitely five out of five stars. Yeah, thank you. Was that EDG? Yes. Yeah, he sent some really cool Ask Davids and some nice comments recently. So uh, we really appreciate you. Ed G. And I think he's a doctor of epidemiology or some such thing. He's oh. a fairly high powered uh, something or other. Oh, cool. Uh, seems like well, a really nice guy. Well, he gave you a five out of five star rating. That was cool. Yeah. Thank you for that. Hey, so Brian, how did you start yeah. working with David and finding out about five secrets and team therapy and all that good stuff? Oh, man. Uh, I'm glad you asked, Rhonda. First off, thanks for having me, guys. I mean, this this technique has changed my entire life, and we'll get wow. into more of that. But um, yeah, so I was seeing a therapist um, in Long Beach, and he, you know, Michael Sherman, and he uh, recommended me read Feeling Good probably back in 2015, 16. I read that book. I loved it. Um, I've been married since 2009, and I love my wife. We have a great marriage, but we, we're we hot and cold. You know what I mean? When it's hot, it's hot, and when it's cold, it's cold, and it fluctuates throughout the day so much, you know? And so, you know, just always have had difficult communication issues, which, you know, lead to bigger issues. And so I was like, man, I really want to fix this thing. So I was looking for uh, different, you know, uh, marriage books, right? And uh I was, as a side note, I'm a huge fan as well as Suzanne Jeffries. I don't know if you guys know her um, from Feeling Good. Uh, no, no, it's um, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Man, it's amazing, amazing book. But I, I was looking for different marriage books. She wrote one, and I liked it, but, you know, it was kind of like just a repeat of her first book, right, a little bit. And uh, with, with David's book, he had Feeling Good together. And when I went into that book, I was like, oh, I hope this isn't just like, feeling good, but then like, oh, just do the same thing in your marriage. Um, But it totally wasn't. And so when I started reading that book, um, it was like, I mean, I'm a Christian myself, right? And I go, you know, follow Jesus and read the Bible. And the book just totally lined up with with kind of what Jesus was talking about, that whole turn the other cheek and take the plank out of your own eye before you try to take a speck out of somebody else's. And it was totally like, this, you take all the responsibility. And I'm like, dude, this is, this is awesome. You know? And so I was impl- implementing these techniques for about a month after I read the book and I was hyped and I was implementing it and having success. But after a while, it, you take so many shots from, from your spouse, your significant other, 
using this technique that I just couldn't keep it up. And so (laughs) I actually emailed David. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's it's hard. And I emailed you and I I was, I was researching you and things like that. And I saw you were responding to people um, in the chats, which I thought was really cool, man, for somebody of your stature to to reach out to people, which is really, really awesome. And so I was like, let me reach out to him, you know? And so I emailed him, he emailed back, I emailed him back in 2018 and then he never emailed me back and so at that point I was just kind of like I had moved on and you know just kind of went back to my old ways of communicating in my marriage it was just too tough without knowing how to overcome the anger I was feeling like how do you do this thing when you're feeling anger and so I had moved on and then uh, just this past September 2020 uh, me and my wife just had a really uh, you know, the turning point argument in your marriage, you know, if you're married or, you, you know, you have a significant other, it's just like, you have that moment, that argument, we've been together 11 years, and it was right before 11th year anniversary. And it was, it was bad, you guys, like, yeah, to the point where, you know, I support my family financially with what I do. And I had cut my wife's credit card off. And I was just angry. And it was, just, it, was it was a bad situation. And we were seeing a therapist at the time. And, um, it was so bad. Like, you know, when that happened that day, we, I think that same day we had our therapy appointment we met with our therapist and she was like, I can't be with you guys. Like you're not, you know, this is, you guys need your own individual therapy. And so we literally got kicked out of our therapy of our marriage therapy. And at that point I had to make a decision. Like if I was going to stay married I had to do something different. And I've, you know, like I said, I was a part of a church then and I believe in God and I really implement that in my life and everything I was trying just wasn't, I was having so much success in different areas of my life, like my business, my health and fitness, being a dad, all these things, but my marriage just didn't seem to move forward. Um, and so let me stop you for just, just one quick yeah, second yeah. here. Cause yeah, I'm not sure. sure if I, did you say you were having trouble in all areas of your life or only in your marriage? Mm, no, just my marriage. Okay. The other yeah. areas were the bomb. They were going great, you know? And so yeah. my, yeah, yeah. And please stop me if I'm going too long. I'll just tend to just go. That's perfect. Thing, but, okay. And so, yeah, so that happened. And so we had that moment once our therapist, you know, kicked us out. And, you know, we were like, we have to make some decisions. And so I was desperate, you know, because um, divorce was definitely thrown around that word, you know what I mean? And that was you know, scary. And it felt me and my wife are very loyal. So I don't feel like that was imminent. But it was one of those things where like, it became real after, after that. And so I was like, okay, I need to do something. And I, I knew feeling good together and the five secrets, I knew they worked. I just didn't know how to implement them. So I got my own therapist that I'm seeing to this day. Right. And then I reached out to David again. I was like, man, David actually reached back out to me. Let me just reach out. Let me just do something because I, I need to save my marriage. So I reached out to him. I started reading the book and I start incorporating, um, using the five secrets again, and this time I pushed through that kind of four week, you know, the anger and stuff. And I can, I can tell you later about what helped me to push through that, but I was able to push through that. And the whole thing that, that David talks about um, in the book, which is really cool. When you first start using the five secrets, your spouse or significant other is not going to, they're not going to come back and go, Oh, wow, this is great. They're going to be like, you don't know how to communicate and, you know, Da, 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 and da, da, da. you just got to kind of take it all right but it's it's been five months and man me and my wife literally are both using the technique at this point point. and back in 2018 i really tried to push this book on my wife you know you know if you marry it just doesn't work you know you try to push a book and or push a technique and they're not going to do it and i tried to push it and she wasn't having it she did read it you know she she says she read it. I still in my mind, like, did you read it? But, <laughs> but <laughs> to this, you know, once we, once September happened, I started incorporating it the correct way. Um, man, she just reciprocated. And now we're on this same page and literally our marriage has changed. And I mean, my mind, guys, is, my mind is blown. Like, mm-hmm. it's blown. And uh, I feel so happy and I'm so excited to be on a podcast. Things are not perfect in my marriage at all. I mean, by any, any means, I'm not an expert, anything like that. I just know that it works. It's really changed me. And I've actually used this in other relationships 
And dude, it's like, it's almost like you play a video game, you have a cheat code. It's almost like using a cheat code. I remember I got into a um, situation with my little sister and she'll probably listen to this, but and she kind of like went at me about something. And I was just like, all right, let me just like, you know, disarming technique. Let me like listen to her repeat back. Let me take responsibility, have empathy, inquire. And dude, it was like, and we're cool now, you know? And so I'm using this not only in my marriage, but with everybody. Um, and it's, it's crazy how this technique, I don't want to say like it controls other people, but there's a, there's a thing you talk about, Dave, in your book about how everybody's a chapter on control, but it, it does, it does. You really control the relationship by how you respond to different people. And it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. My thought about that, I love what you're saying, and we should go into more detail on the disarming yes. technique because it seems like when you pick that up, it really started working. You had some of the other five secrets going like thought and feeling empathy, and we can explain what these terms mean and mm-hmm. dem- demonstrate sure. them. But when you got into the uh, disarming technique, that's when the, the magic started to happen. But as you say, that's the hardest thing because we have such an urge to blame other people. We don't want to see the truth in criticism yeah. because that's right. kind of like the death of the self. But the, the, from the, the Christian point of view, there's the concept of death and rebirth. And you can take that literally or you can yes. take it figuratively. Yes. I mean, we can die and be reborn when we're still alive. And that's what the yes. disarming technique is all about. It's it's basically a, a spiritual technique, I would say, although it's it's right. it's it's secular. It's not tied in with any religion. It works well with mm-hmm. w- w- with any religion, and and I think yep. the idea is that probably the core of most of most religions. But it's it's so it's so difficult. Um, uh, I, I love what you're saying. Keep 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 talking, and and maybe if you can give us some examples, like what did your little sister say to you? What what kind of things? What was your wife saying to you when when, when right. she when she was angry? And then we can practice responding and bring the different techniques to to life a little bit. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, so I mean, one of the things that uh, that my wife has said um, in a relationship journal, I actually uh, emailed you, was um, there, it's, it's simple, right? But it was kind of it hurt at the time. But I was kind of laying in a bed, and I told I usually tell the kids to get ready for bed, and then I just let them go because if I'm hovering over them, I'm just getting frustrated because they're asking questions, right? But my wife likes to be involved, so I was told him to go to bed. And then I kind of went in a room and laid down. And then my wife came in and she was like, come in here and help put the kids down to bed, Brian, you know, in a, in a strong, you know, tone. And, um, I replied, like, I didn't say anything. I ignored her. Cause I was like, dude, she's like, my wife was tripping. I'm just, I thought it was better to not say something. You know, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it at all. You know, I thought that it, ignoring her was the best thing which makes no sense but um, <laughs> yeah that's kind of what it was and so yeah. when you ignored her what did she say uh so i'm kind of guessing it escalated yeah it, it did you know like her <laughs> attitude was definitely like she wasn't you know happy about that she kind of i think she stormed off and just kind of you know put the kids to bed and that left her feeling upset with me and then you know, just goes into, you know, just a full circle, you know? Yeah. And just to talk about the uh, Mm -hmm. the EAR thing and step three and four of the relationship journal, when, when she says, come, come and help me in an angry tone, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that, that, that gets under your, your skin, but, Mm -hmm. but uh, how how is she feeling? Um, she, I'm, I'm assuming she's feeling that very upset, you know. <laughs> right, and, right, and and and, and and then why is she feeling upset? Because because it's bad not, weather. What what's what? Why is she? Because <laughs> I'm not helping out with the kids. Right, and she's and doing when, it by herself. She feels alone and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then when when you say nothing, uh, what conclusion does she draw? Um. She's like, I'm ignoring her. I, I don't care about her. You know? Right. Um, so who's yeah. forcing her to feel like you don't care about her? Yeah, I am. Yeah, that's that's that whole we create our own inner interpersonal reality. Yes. And 
one of the things I admired so much about you, most people don't want to see that. Uh, most people mm-hmm. want to blame the the other person. And when when I'm working with depression and anxiety, most of the people who come to me uh, recover in one two hour session, and then we do a a tune up, and and that's about it. That's all it takes. Sometimes mm-hmm. they'll have a little relapse. I'll give them another tune up, but it, it doesn't mm-hmm. take long. But relationship problems, the success rate that I see and some of my colleagues see is is pretty low because people don't yeah. want to look at their own role. Uh, that that's you know the 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 death of the the self. We we don't want to become vulnerable. We want to blame the other person, be angry at right. them, and, and feel morally superior. Can you just talk about that a, a little bit? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you asked me about that, David, because that's that's really what helped me to get through this. Like, um, it, it's it's difficult, you know, um, when somebody's coming at you with. What yeah. you feel is venom, you know, and yeah. especially somebody close to you, it feels like you're getting stabbed, you know, over and over. And, you know, in the beginning, the first time I tried to use the four, the, the five secrets, um, you know, I was able to take a little bit, but it got to a point where I just couldn't take it. And I just started lashing out again. As yeah, right. To disarming, right. What really helped me, it, this is really, really crazy, right? Like, The first two weeks of using it in September was the most difficult, but what helped is really the empathy part. Like what would happen is my wife would say all this stuff and I had to say, okay, I don't like how she said this, but let me just arm, let me repeat back for to kind of disarm. Like, okay, I can see how you see this. Then I started having empathy. I started going down the list of like, okay, yeah, man, I haven't really been a great communicator. When I ignored you, that really wasn't great. And the deeper I went down this rabbit hole of empathy, the anger actually dissipated. It started to break up. Mm-hmm. And it's, and I started to feel like bad for my wife. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I, that was the, the key, the sauce for me, is, is to delve into that empathy part to where it's going to hurt really bad. And you get to this point where you, where you start to like feel bad for the other person, even though they're coming at you with venom. It's, it's a crazy phenomenon, David. And, yeah. and that started to happen. And I was yeah. like, man, this is a trip, you know? Um, and it's actually yeah. working, you know? Yeah. And that, and that, that is an inherently spiritual thing. That's what we saw in the group. Yeah, Rhonda yeah. led our Tuesday group at Stanford last Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And we had our most popular group in the past 20 years because people mm-hmm. rate, rate it at the end. And, um, uh, uh, and and that one of the reasons it was so good is not just Rhonda and the two colleagues she had as her assistants were just incredible. But we had mm-hmm. a fellow in the group who, who had been at odds with his brother. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess they grew up in Idaho. And then he moved to San Francisco and his mm-hmm. brother got angry at him. And they were really at sword's edge for years, just ragging on each other and fighting all the time right and right. then we use this technique called forced empathy where you you mm. it allows you to see the world through the eyes of the person who you're in conflict with and mm. Rhonda just maneuvered it so beautifully and and when this fellow suddenly saw why his brother was treating him so shambly because he felt hurt and unloved Mm-hmm. You know, the, the person in our group suddenly saw how he was causing his brother to feel that way. And all this time, he'd been feeling like, like a victim. And when he saw that, he just started sobbing almost uncontrollably. Wow. And, and it was the most beautiful thing. It's exactly what, what, you're, what you're saying right now. It was so freeing for him. And, yeah. and all of a sudden, his, his anger and his bitterness changed and now he's reached out to his his his, his, his brother it it's it's a religious message really it's yeah, uh, uh, it's beyond psychology but it's a psychological th- thing tell us more about y- your experience you you were saying instead of you know seeing her as a, as a bitch or a this or a that or whatever well, suddenly he- you're, you're you're seeing why she's hurting Rhonda well yeah. i just love the image that you came up with it's so powerful that she's coming at you with venom and you're feeling like you're being stabbed. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. that what, is that what you said? And then you can, yeah, that's, that's so right. powerful. 
Yeah, it feels like that. And uh, man, the, the same thing you said, David, is I had that experience. This was maybe four or six weeks into using the techniques. I remember I was in a bathroom and I do a lot. We have a nice bathroom. So I stretch and do yoga and like I, I listen to music. It's like my little sanctuary. But I'm in there doing my thing. And um, and man, I almost want to get emotional now. I started thinking about because I've been using a technique a lot and just listen to her. And when you listen to people, uh, usually they're saying the same two or three things over and over. It sounds like a million things, but it's really right. the same two or three. Right. Yeah. And so I was thinking about all these years, like 11 years of not listening to my wife. And it makes me like want to cry right now. Like not listening to my wife, throwing this venom at her. And I just start bawling, man. I was, I was bawling. My wife had took the kids out to the park and I was just crying. And it just really hit my heart, just how I had been responding. And not, I mean, of course my wife's done stuff to me, you know what I mean? Of course, but I was just thinking about me and how I've responded and it, it, it hit my heart a lot, a lot. And I just start bawling, but yeah, it's, it's totally, totally a, a spirit experience, but it, it's, you know, I would recommend for anybody, they got to break through though. The beginning is, is, is hard to, to get there. It's difficult, but if you, if Brian, you talk a little bit about it. how hard it was and how, what, what was, cause you said when you started it in 2018, you kind of gave up and it was, yeah. it was too hard. But then when you started it in 2020, right. Something pushed you to keep going when it got hard. Right. What was I the think, I, you know, I think one, because my marriage was kind of on a line, right? And this was mm. kind of like our therapist dropped this. So I'm like, okay, this is, I need to keep this up. And then secondly, the feeling empathy um, mm. portion of the five secrets, really going deep into it. Like you got to dig like a mile deep into that. It, it's like, you just can't like the feeling empathy, but oh, okay, I see how you feel. But you got to really think about, like David said, your part in it, like, how have my actions really jacked this person up? You know what I mean? And so when I dug deep into that, that's when I was able to, to really get in touch with what my wife was feeling. Mm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that was the difference. I dug deeper. Like the first time I dug maybe a couple feet, the, the second time I dug a mile, you know? Yeah. Yes. I have a couple of questions because I, I, I yes. just love what you're saying. Um, sure. I, I, I like to think in terms of paradoxes a lot of times, but mm -hmm. when you see yourself as fully to blame, you become blameless. Mm. Right. Does, does that mean anything? Oh, um, really yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kind of. Sounds mind like elderly like babbling. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I, I'm trying to think of how I how I related that. But no, that's that's definitely true. Like the thing I thought about is what's really cool. And I don't know if this relates and I apologize if it doesn't, David. But what's cool, too, is when you start using the secrets like like um. I'll just, women are really good talkers in general, right? And they can, they, they can talk very well and express a lot better than men generally. And so when my wife expresses things to me, I, I kind of feel guilty a lot of the times. And, I, and that's where the venom comes back, right? But when using the five secrets, the more I use them, the more you're able, it's like the matrix, you're able to see things for what they are. So if somebody else is saying something to you, you're like, wow, that person isn't having empathy or that person isn't really seeing things from my point of view. The way they're communicating is not good. And it's not to throw that back at them, but you can see that and yeah. you're able to say, you, for me, I'm able to not take it as personal because I know that their communication, I don't want to say skill, but I'm going to use the word, their communication skill is not really refined. It's kind of like, it's a bad example, but it's like if you're fighting against somebody that's way weaker than you then you're kind of like okay like i'm i don't really need to um does that make sense when i say i it's a this kind of a bad example to judge people i'm not trying to judge but it feels like you're in this fight and the person isn't really as skilled so you can be a little bit more gentle and humble with them i don't know if that makes sense but it sounds all. like to me like what you're saying is because you know the five secrets, when someone is yelling at you or upset with you for whatever reason, you're able to look at them and say, I can understand what they're feeling. Like your, like your wife, yes. I can understand that she's feeling alone or she's feeling not supported. Right, and that's right. the part of, then you're responding to that part of her. You're not responding yeah. to the yelling or the, the right. 
And because thank you're you for putting, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're responding thank you. to her aloneness <laughs> or her feelings, then her her anger goes away, and then the two of you are able right. to talk on a more feeling level. Right. Is yes. That, is that accurate? That's way better. And if my wife listens to this, she may be upset that I use that example. But that's yes. Thank you, yeah, Rhonda. Now, that, that, now I have another <laughs> crazy demented question for you. Sure. Rhonda gives sure, you the sure. practical, clear stuff, and I'm off in the mystical dimension. But <laughs> You know, I'm thinking I about it. blessed are the poor in heart for they shall see God, mm-hmm. you know, like Sermon on the Mount uh, k- kinds of stuff, which, well, ignore yeah. that. But, but, but I was wondering when, when you were crying mm-hmm. and, and, and seeing your, your wife's suffering, mm-hmm. uh, would, would you say that those tears are a form of spirituality? Oh yeah. Big time, big time. You know, it's, it, it felt like, um, it just like I was in touch with it, but it was cool because it wasn't like I was sad at myself. Like, oh, I'm a bad person. And my wife said it was just right. like recognizing and a respecting right. of what I've been doing, you know, yeah. and just like, man, I don't want to be this person anymore, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it, and it wasn't one of those things where I, oh, I stopped crying. Then I was like, perfect. It, not at all, but it's just, you get more in touch and it just yeah. makes your muscle yeah. Stronger and stronger. Yeah. This is exactly yeah. what we saw Tuesday. And the fact that you could do that on your own. I mean, I didn't work with you. I didn't give you much input. I scolded you a little here and there to do more of the I disarming technique. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was I just watching that. you. And then yeah. I wouldn't hear from you for a month or two. And then all of a sudden, you'd yeah. send me a report of what you were doing. It was exciting mm-hmm. to watch this 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 process. And mm-hmm. I, I just have uh, such incredible respect for you uh could we practice a little so people can see exactly what we're talking about yeah absolutely we'll see where my skills are you know yeah well (laughs) i I have a a little exercise that we could uh, start out on and i'm sure Rhonda will have her ideas too but i'm going to ask you to play two roles sure first you're going to be your wife and rip into you the way she used to do okay Sure. And then you're going to be yourself and respond with the five secrets okay. and whatever is an effective way. And then we'll all give you a grade, A, B, C, D, <laughs> and we'll say, here's what worked, here's what didn't work, and, and, and here's how it can be improved if it, if it needs improving. Sure, uh, sure. And this this is an exercise too for people who are listening. I mean, I'll I'll try to post the five secrets with the show notes, where you could get the book "Feeling Good" together and read it and do the written exercises. But this is like playing the piano. Mm-hmm. You can't watch someone play the piano and then sit down and expect to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. It takes tremendous practice, mistakes, uh, commitment. Uh, and, and until you until you finally get it, so um, you uh, can we give your wife a name or fake name or we have to refer to her as somebody? Oh uh, yeah, we can refer to her real name. Her brand, her name is Michelle. She's Michelle, awesome. She's okay. Beautiful. Like I love Michelle her. Obama. I love Michelle, that name. Such a beautiful. Yeah, yeah name. my grandmother, my grandmother who who passed a few years, she used to call me and my wife Michelle and Barack Obama. Right? Oh, is that <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, what a yeah, high yeah. compliment. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 exactly. I love it. Okay, um, so be, be, you be Michelle. Okay. Um, man, this is a little difficult because I don't want to throw my wife under the bus and stuff. And so, you know, we're going to like, throw you on, under the we're bus. Don't worry. Oh, you're going to throw me. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'm going to be Michelle and you're going to be me, right? No, you're going to well, be well, you. I'm going to have you play oh, both. I'm going to be both. Actually, yeah. I'm going to play both. Okay, okay, cool. Um all right. Um, hey, Brian, when you were recording your video in a room while I was talking with my best friend, you were being extremely rude and selfish. And I think you're very rude and selfish. That's perfect. Just give me a minute to write write it down. Uh, okay, that's an excellent uh, criticism. Now be Brian and, and, and respond. And, and, uh, you can just do, do your best, uh, five, five, five secrets here. Yeah, sure. I'll do my best. Um, Hey, babe, uh, man, you know, um, what I, what I hear you saying is that when I was recording a video, you felt like I was being rude and selfish and I can understand how you can see that because you were t- talking to your friend 
you know, there was actually a point I was thinking about, oh man, this is kind of like not good, but you didn't say anything. So that was my fault for not, you know, listening to my own intuition. So um, I do apologize for that. I appreciate you telling me how you feel about the situation. Great. Um, let me finish writing it down so I can get it in the show notes. Um, now, um, uh, now, what what grade did you give yourself on that? Uh, <laughs> I give myself like a, I guess a C, C plus. I would say. Okay, what grade did you give it, uh, Rhonda? I would give you a. Um, be mm-hmm. on. Help me out. Help me out, Rhonda. <laughs> okay, be I'm sorry. Keep I would also give it. you a C. I'm sorry. I'd also sure. give you a C. But I want to tell you sure. what I love about it too. But I want to hear what mm-hmm. David said. You you both gave it a C because I yeah. would have given it a B or a B plus. I thought it was really re- really great. I thought there were two or three specific errors uh, that could, uh, if corrected, could could make it uh, world class. Uh, but uh, you you guys give your your feedback first, and then I'll I'll give mine. Then we can we can try try it again. Okay, Brian, tell me what tell us what you loved, what you liked about what you did. What did you do? A uh, good job on. Well, first I used the five C, so that's that's, that's a right. huge right. I didn't Definitely. get crazy, which yeah. So, uh, but no, I I really try to listen to like repeat back what she says, so I can make sure I understand like thought empathy you know, like repeating what she said and taking responsibility, you know, the disarming technique, like taking responsibility and saying, hey, like what you're saying is true. Like I was being rude and selfish, you know, that's that's what I liked about it. That's why I gave it a B plus. I thought uh, that those components were very, very important. Um, where did you think you fell short? Um, I didn't use... Uh, I feel statements, um, which I'm, st- I'm still like learning how to use those, you know, that's still a kind of an area of weakness for me, but I didn't use, I feel. And then, um, I didn't use the, um, um, what is it? Positive encouragement. I forgot the word. Inquiry. Uh, stroking. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Stroking. So I didn't use stroking or, um, I feel statements and I feel like I could have afforded to Dude, I, I tried to use stroking at the end, but I feel like it could have been stronger, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, what's your feedback, Rhonda? Well, you know, I too, I love that you used the five secrets and you're, you're <laughs> yeah, right. and you know, you're warm, your tone of voice, you're like, really, I, I feel like you're really present. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like listening to you and nobody can see you, but I can see you. And like, you, mm-hmm. you seems really sincere and Thank um, genuine. Genuine, yeah. It's, there's no like BS involved. I thought you, you did a fantastic job on the thought empathy. Um, you did a re- yeah. You did a fantastic job on thought empathy. I liked how you said that was my fault. I didn't hear you say it was my fault for I was rude and selfish. I heard you say that was my fault for not listening to my intuition. Mm-hmm. And um, like the disarm could have been stronger. I think that could have been stronger. There's a part of me that mm. liked that, and there's a part of me that felt a little dismissed. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, I love how <laughs> I you. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but uh, also, you didn't ask her. Like, I didn't. Like, I, the reason I gave you a C is because I I didn't hear stroking, or I feel, which I hear that that. And for me, I have to admit that that's hard for me too. I feel statements mm. sometimes. I'm kind of when somebody's upset with me. I'm. I don't know how I'm feeling in that moment. And you also didn't ask her to tell you more about what that was like for her. You didn't ask her to, you know, some questions to get out more from her. Sure. No, I love that, Rhonda. That's that's exactly what my wife would have said. Like she when she listened to this, she's gonna be like, Yo, Rhonda. Like <laughs> I, I love it. I need that help. Yeah, you is she gonna listen it. to this podcast? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. She's cool, cool. Well, hi, Michelle. Thank yeah, you. Hi, Michelle. We should have Michelle on next. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's and I, I agree with the feedback of both of you. Um, one, one thing that I always tell therapists who are in role plays, what's one emotion that no therapist in the, in the United States has ever acknowledged or will ever be able to acknowledge? Do you know what it is, Brian? You're not a therapist, but you, your guess might be as good as anybody's. <laughs> Uh, I've done over a thousand role plays like this with therapists, and there's one emotion in terms of feeling empathy 
that that no therapist has ever been able to acknowledge, even when told to do so. There's something they always ignore, which you ignored. I, I ignored it. Yeah, it, it has to do with feeling empathy, and I'll give you the answer if you if you want. Uh, I yeah, I have no idea. Well, you um, didn't I, acknowledge her emotion. She was probably feeling hurt and angry. Oh. Uh, and and anger is one emotion that therapists are almost uneducable. They're, they're so phobic about uh, m- mentioning it. Isn't that true, Rhonda? That is so true. Yeah. And that would have made it uh, stronger. I thought you had a very nice framework to get started on. We just need to to touch it up a little bit. But uh, that, so the feeling empathy could have, yeah, could, then the disarming, as Rhonda says, could have been stronger. So you say, you know, you're right. I, I, I was being rude and selfish. And then for an I feel statement, it's it really hurts me to see what you're saying because what you're saying is so absolutely true. And not only did I hurt you just now and was disrespectful just now. I was just crying recently when I was alone, when you were at the park, because I realized Mm -hmm. I've been doing this to you for years Mm -hmm. and blaming you and not looking at at what what I've been doing to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sad to hear that because I, I love you tremendously. And that would be some, some stroking, uh, I, I feel so lucky to have you and so ashamed of how I've been insensitive. Uh, mm-hmm. And and I'm wondering if, if you could tell me more. I'm finally ready to listen. T- tell me more mm-hmm. about that and what that's, what that's been, been like for you and how hurt you felt, how angry you felt, how frustrated, how alone, how, 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 re- how rejected. Mm. Uh, th- what you're saying, Michelle, is so important. How's that? I mean, this is, that's that's amazing. I mean, like, <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that, I love that, Dave. I appreciate you saying that too, because, like I said, man, I'm I'm not any expert at all. And oh, you are. I need so much. I I need so much help, and what we you all said, do. And, yeah, and you and Rhonda, what we both said, it just helps me so much to like clean this thing up. You know, um, I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, let, let, we're going to try it again, uh, and okay. uh, and you have to be uh, ready to fail as fast as you can. In other words, we might do this eight times before you get an A, and you might just screw mm. up eight times in a row. Is that okay? Okay. Oh yeah, for sure. That's yeah. Yeah, and that that's, that's the thing about. you've got to set your ego at the door when 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 you when you do this because it's mm. it's not only technically difficult. But it's the self that has to to die, and that's what I meant. See, I was totally blameless. I totally, I took all the blame mm-hmm. in my response. And did you see that that made me blameless? Yeah, yeah, I see. I exactly Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And, that, and that's the spiritual paradox. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a practical paradox. But anyway, I'm probably using too many big words here for our listeners. No, no. Well, hey, O'Brien, can I be in the role of Michelle now that you gave us yeah. the, what she said? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to do Michelle. Yep. Hey, Brian, when you were recording your video and I was in the other room talking on the phone with my best friend, you know, that call is really important to me. And you were being really rude and selfish. Not only were you being rude and selfish, this time you're, that's who you are. You're always rude and selfish. Man, um... So yeah, they, uh, I appreciate you you telling me you know how you feel. I, I hear you saying that I am rude and selfish, and you know when you were on the phone with your best friend, I was just being um, rude and selfish by being loud and recording my video. And I can definitely absolutely see um, where you are coming from, and you know um, I agree that I have you know, definitely been, you know, a lot of times when it comes to these things, like I'm, I I can just think about myself first. And so I, I definitely agree with you. And, you know, I feel sad <clears throat> that my actions have caused you to, to feel this way. And it really makes me feel like, like, man, you know, I don't want you to feel that I'm, I'm rude and selfish, you know, um, I love you a lot. I want you to have time with your best friend. I want your time with your best friend to be really great. Um, and I want to hear more about how you feel about this whole situation. 
Great. Now, what grade do you give yourself? I don't even know. I was I was really kind of thinking a lot. So I mean, C plus, same. Okay. What do you give it, uh, Dronda? I'd give it an A minus. Yeah, I, I thought oh, it was up you. in the A minus range because there's only I thought only one piece missing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what it was? Did I not acknowledge her feeling hurt or angry again? Or? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the only thing you missed. Oh. And 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 it, it'll actually be impossible for you to do that because <laughs> no therapist or non-therapist in the United States has ever once been able to acknowledge someone's anger and never will be able to. So I defy you to do it, because if you can do it, you'll be the first person in the world. <laughs> That's a slight exaggeration, but not not much of one. But aside from that, I mean, that was I, I can see why you did so well on your own, because you learn super fast. And not oh, only you, did you learn technical things really fast just now and modified radically what you'd said, but also. Uh, the 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 humility is so absolutely necessary to do this technique yeah. and sometimes i get uh, you know t- ticked off too uh usually i i do this and then it works like a charm but every now and then i just want to say oh go screw you or something like that right, I, right. you know you get of tired of, of take, taking shots we drift in and out of enlightenment um mm-hmm. well Rhonda has something really important to say and yeah you know, i'm just imagining that all of the listeners of this podcast are going to be thinking, gee, I wish my, my partner would be talking to me the way Brian's talking to Michelle. (laughs) Man. I mean, what I can say is like, before I started using this, it was bad. Like my, so here's what I did before I was an avoider. You know what I mean? My wife came at me with what I call venom, with what David would call just hurt because of my, because of how I was, not communicating with her. I would be like, oh, I'm gonna call a timeout. I'm calling a timeout. And I would like never come back to the conversation or this is too emotional or you need to calm down or it just, you know, I would say stuff That's like that. That's effective to t- sell that to people. Yeah. <laughs> say, you need to calm down to stop being so neurotic. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. It was ridiculous. So it was, you know, it, that's what I did. And even to this day, like, like, honestly, let's be honest, right? Like, if you ask my wife, like, hey, how great is a Brian is a communicator? I'm not going to get uh, a minus or probably even a B, you know, to be honest, you know, right? Because it's different when it's your spouse. Sure. But yeah. I was, it was bad. You know, I just, I just walked away. And to this day, I have to really try to listen. Even Rhonda, when you were sharing that with me, I was trying to imagine my wife saying it and it hurts me a lot, like deeply when my wife says, labels me as rude or selfish. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, labels are painful. Yeah, it's extremely painful. And so I was, I was imagining that and that's so hard. That's why I have to pause for a minute and then like, okay, let me, let me respond in this way, you Mm -hmm. know? Let me ask you a question yeah. um, to go over to the cognitive therapy model from feeling good, which is yes. an entirely different way of thinking about it. Sure. Um, why is it upsetting to you if uh, if she thinks you're rude and selfish? And, and I'll give you part of the answer, and then you have to give the rest. And the part of the mm-hmm. answer is her thoughts about you will never affect you, only, only if you buy into them. Right. That's your thoughts. So it sounds like when you think of yourself as rude and selfish, that's kind of devastating to you. Yeah, yeah. And is. why is that? Um, I think I was just dealing with something this morning along those same lines of this, but it's um, it, it makes because I, I think I put a lot of value into what other people like. My value comes from what other people think about me. You mm-hmm. know, I think I've put a lot of value in that in my life you know sure which is really not good obviously right and um so it's you your value comes from what other people think think of you and and a lot of us uh are in that approval addiction trap and so if she yes, says that yes. you're rude and selfish you you think that that she's judging you uh mm-hmm. ju- judging you and yourself and 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 uh and and maybe not loving you or not 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 approving of you is is that right, right? is something like that yeah yeah absolutely and then um if and then if that were true if she 
labels you as rude and selfish and and does doesn't uh, isn't approving of you just at that moment what what does that mean to you why is that upsetting to you um i guess that means like uh, yeah this is i i, I recognize this rabbit hole david yeah <laughs> I think, sure uh, it, Yes, yeah, and I ask my, I, I hear your voice in my head sometimes when, when I'm going through this. But like, I think it means that I'm a bad person. Like, it just means like I'm not good. I'm not, I'm not good. Oh, and I and I have an addiction to like being perfect, right? Like, oh yeah, trying to do everything the right way, right? And I want to be, you know, righteous. I want to be right, and I want to be perfect. And so, if I'm not doing things the right way, or somebody doesn't see me like that, then that means that I'm a bad person. Oh, okay. Now let's let's play another little cognitive therapy game since you're on a yeah. fast learning yeah, role. Yeah. Uh, and uh, wh- what is your name, Brian? It's uh, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what my name is? Yes, it's David. No. Brian, I'm going to be the negative Brian or the positive oh, Brian, okay. and we'll do something called gotcha. externalization of voices, and we'll get Rhonda in, into this too. And the okay. the idea behind it, it would be to uh, reduce that vulnerability to to feeling like you're a bad person or that you're not good enough or that you're not perfect enough. And so what what I want you to do is mm-hmm. to be the negative Brian first and attack me in the okay. second person you and say things like, well, if you're rude and sound, I think you're rude and your wife thinks you're rude, rude and selfish. And this means you're a bad mm-hmm. person. And, and, and this means you're not, not good and so forth. And see if you can uh, upset me and I'll be the positive okay, so self-loving you- Brian. Okay, cool. And is it, okay, cool. That sounds good. So this is a cognitive therapy technique. This isn't like five secrets. This is a little different right. type of deal. Yeah, I'm familiar. Yeah. Is that okay, Rhonda? Perfect. Yeah, great. So go ahead. Hit me with uh, one of those thoughts. Um. So you're. So I'm, this, the, I'm sorry, I'm Brian. Question. I'm the self-loving Brian, and you're the uh, self-critical Brian. Okay, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So David, Brian, you can say something like. Because cause you can use the negative thought that's in your own head to attack David. You can say, you know, you know, your wife thinks you're rude and selfish, and that means you are a bad person. Does it have to be from my relationship, or can it be from anything? No, it can well, it be- can be from anything. That, that it would wouldn't hurt to make it on the relationship stuff, since since that's kind of what what we're focused on. But it could be on anything oh, gotcha. else. Okay, got you. Um, so I'll use a real one from this morning that was pretty intense. Like, um, so you're you're worthless because you're not. Well, let me let me preface this. I'm sorry. Let me preface. So I I dance for a living. I'm actually a professional break dancer. I have a school where I teach. Oh, well, that's awesome! I love that. Uh, maybe yeah, you can send yeah. me a video to post with oh, yeah. the uh, show notes. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I got you. I got you. So, yeah. right, I'm, I'm going to set this up real quick and then we'll do it. So I, I dance for a living. I've been dancing 20 years. I'm a great dancer, right? However, I haven't won like all these competitions. And so, oh, yeah. But I, my, my business is extremely strong, but I haven't done all this stuff. So a lot of times I beat myself up because I'm not on the same level as somebody else. So, oh, yeah, sure. That's what I'm going to I love that. So, yeah. That's what the app I'm working on is all about that too. I'm not good enough and how to yeah. overcome that. And so we'll do yeah. a little externalization of voices. Yeah, go go ahead. Okay, cool. All right. So uh by Brian, the way, you've you... heard of my breakdancing, I I I assume. Ooh. <laughs> Have you seen know, David's David. breakdancing video? <laughs> 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 I don't know about that one. <laughs> I can't even skip anymore. <laughs> <laughs> David, you're funny, man. Humor helps. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, so go ahead. I'm Brian, right, the break cool. dancer. And sure. you're Brian's um, critical self. Yes, yes. Um, so man, you suck at dance and which makes you a worthless individual. 
Okay, well, that's 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 quite a bit there, big guy. Uh, you're saying that I that I suck at dance, that I'm a a, a, a worthless a, a worthless in, individual. Well, let's let's look at those two things. Um, actually, it's not true that I I suck at dance. Uh, I'm damn good at dance. Now, there's other dancers that are probably better than me who have won a lot of competitions. But I'm I'm proud of what I've accomplished in in dancing, but I do have uh, another pretty horrible fault that you haven't mentioned. And what is that? Listening to your bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Man. Isn't that cool? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And yeah. when you say I'm a, a worthless individual, I'm I'm not that bright, so I don't I actually don't even know what you're talking about. But when you say I'm a worthless individual, to quote well, the Buddha I mean, and I, Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount, he said, what the shit are you talking about? David, don't. don't <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of flaws, though. My, you know, what, uh, you know I've, I've tons of flaws, if that's what you mean. I'll certainly own up to that. Sure. But you do have, you have goals. That oh, yeah. You're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And. You're Absolutely. not accomplishing them, so that makes well, I'm accomplishing you many goals. Uh, in the, no, the, well, I don't accomplish all my goals, but I'm accomplishing one of them. That's take it, talking back to your constant abuse and BS, beating up on me like this with your nonsensical criticisms. But uh, what what did you say? I can't even remember what you said. No, I said you have goals that. Oh, goals! Yes, and I've accomplished a lot of my goals. I've accomplished my goal of building a tremendous business. I haven't won all the competitions I'd, I'd I'd love to to win. I'll I'll always have goals that I've accomplished and goals that I, that I'm still working on or haven't accomplished. I succeed sometimes. I fail sometimes. Is that is that all you meant? Yeah, I mean, but it's like, the ones that you failed at. Those are the most important ones. The ones you succeeded at, they're like, really don't, they don't make you a better person. Well, I'm not trying to become a better person. I'm just trying to stop listening to your constant abuse. <laughs> <laughs> if if you weren't chattering in my ear all the time, I, I think life would be a pretty joyous experience. I've got a beautiful wife and I'm learning to love her and to get close to her. I've got a great business. Uh, but 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 yes, uh, you know, should I be a sh real ashamed if I fail at something, or if I haven't accomplished some of my goals? Gosh, if I didn't have goals yes. that I haven't accomplished, I wouldn't be have anything to push myself forward to. I think it's awesome that I have all kinds of goals that I'm working my butt off to accomplish. I'm proud of myself. What if you never accomplished those things? Oh, there will always be things I haven't accomplished. That, that'll that never be a problem. I only have one problem. And that's me, right? Yeah, listening to you. <laughs> now, let, let's try a role reversal. Who, who, who won that exchange, would you say? I would say you did, for sure. I mean, the things that you came with, you know, you were very confident, you know, in how, yeah. you, how you approached it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try a role reversal. And, sure. And I, I, I was using three techniques, by the way, because mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. like techniques. It helps you see what I'm doing. One, I'm using the acceptance yes. paradox. I'm mm -hmm. accepting the fact that I have flaws and things I haven't uh, accomplished. I'm also using something called self-defense. And that mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm arguing with you when when appropriate and pointing out that I have accomplished tremendous things mm -hmm. on many levels with my business, with my wife, with my communication, in many areas mm -hmm. of my life. And then I'm also doing something called the CAT, C A T. That's the counterattack okay. technique. And I'm pointing out over and over again that the source of my unhappiness is not any goals that I've accomplished or failed to accomplish. It's the fact that I'm constantly beating up on myself with these distorted, unfair uh, self-criticisms. Wow, that's yeah, that's that's powerful. Yeah. That's, yeah. Now yeah. let's let let's see if 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 you can do some of this. You want to be the negative, uh, uh, Brian, Rhonda? Sure. Okay, okay. If you, Brian. I'll I'll attack you, and then you. Okay. You be the positive, Brian. Okay. Sure. sure. And what's Rhonda's name? 
Brian, negative yeah. Brian. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, Brian, sorry to tell you this, but you suck at dance, which makes you, a, you know, basically a worthless individual. Yeah, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm definitely not the best dancer. I wouldn't say I suck at dance. Um, as far as me being worthless, I mean, that's just, I don't think whether I dance good or not defines my worth. Mm. Who won that? I think I did, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> did you win large or small? Mm, maybe a little bit. Just you think you just want to small? I think I don't know. Okay, I think maybe. You want to do a role reversal and hit me with your negative thought? Because the goal is to hit it to um to win it huge. Got you, got you. Okay, okay. yeah, no, for sure. Um, okay, so now you hit. I'll be the, you. You hit me with the negative, and I'll be the positive. Let's let me okay. see if I can hit that out of the park huge. Okay. For sure, for sure. Oh, uh, let me think of one. So no, let's just keep um, doing this one until we hit this one out. Is that? Oh yeah, thing? yeah. I'm thinking yeah. of a thought like with this. Okay, um, you will never achieve your goals in dance. Now, just for a second, Rhonda, let's do some agenda setting with positive yeah. reframing. Let's do that. So, Brian. What is this thought? What are these thoughts about, you know, you feeling worthless or you suck at dance, you're not the best dancer. Mm -hmm. What is the, you know, if I had a magic button and I could sh send the magic button to you through the internet. And if you push mm -hmm. this button, those thoughts and whatever challenging feelings I'm, that are connected to them would immediately go away without any effort on your part. Would you push the button and get And you'd feel euphoric. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We know what? I would actually be reluctant to have you push that button. You know why? Why? I, I think these thoughts and the feelings that accompany them say really awesome, beautiful things about you. Things that address your, you know, like things about your core values or maybe even things that are protective of you. And I'm wondering if we could take a little moment to, you know, kind of see what these thoughts say about you that are awesome. Mm, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, do you have a you, piece of paper and a pencil to write a few things I, down or type them I on? I do have a, I have a notepad open right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think the thought you suck at dance says about you? That's, that's really awesome and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it says, I think what you're saying value, like, I mean, I do know how to dance, you know, like there's, I can dance, you know what I mean? Like, so. But when you say I suck at dance, what does that criticism show about you and your core values that's uh, positive and awesome? And what are some benefits to you in giving yourself that message? Oh, I, man, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I have no idea, guys, what that says is positive. Well, do you think it shows that you have pretty high standards for yourself? Yeah. And is that yeah, a, you could say that. Is that an important value to have high high standards for yourself? I do. Yeah. Put that put that down, high standards. Yeah, I wrote that down, yeah. Uh-huh. And um have your high standards helped you? Yes. How have they I'm sure they have. How have they helped you? I think, uh, you know, I have a high standard and, you know, my morality, I have a high standard and my work ethic, just everything. And so I think it's helped me to, you know, to achieve a lot of things I've wanted to achieve. We'll put that down as number two. Uh, okay. Uh, m m motivates me uh, to, to achieve. Okay. And uh, is that real? Yes. You said, uh -huh. is it real? Like, this has it happened, you mean? Yeah, have you achieved no, a lot? Is it a make-believe yeah. or is it real? No, that's, it's real. Uh -huh. is, yeah. is that important? Yes. Is that powerful? Yes. Cool. What are, what are some other beautiful things about you that when you say, I suck at dance and uh, I'll never achieve my goals, what are some other awesome things this shows about you? Um. That I think that I value setting goals, that I do have goals that, 
that I set for myself, you know. Is that a, is that true? Yes. Is that important? Yes. A- add that I, that I I I set goals, uh, and 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 work to achieve them, right? Mm-hmm. In fact, that's how you got on this podcast, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 I was, yeah. I'm a, uh... Because you told yourself I'm a lousy communicator, and then you set your your goal of changing it, and you had you were doing that. Right, right. No, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. So, Brian, you're not the kind of person that goes around and telling people, "Hey, have you ever met me? I'm the best dancer in the world. I am the greatest dancer." Hey, have you ever seen me dance? I'm the greatest. So you don't go around doing that. What What do you think of people who do that? I think that's uh, definitely arrogance. You know. Mm-hmm. So you're yeah. not arrogant. What does that make you? Humble. Yeah. Put that, put that down. Uh, is, okay. Is, is that a spiritual humble. value? Yeah, definitely. Definitely being humble is. Uh, cool. Sure. Cool. So yeah. you've got that on your list. Now I have another thing to add. When when you say I, I suck at dancing and I'll never achieve my my, my goals or some of my goals, uh, does that show that you're uh, realistic and honest with yourself? Um, when I say that I'll never achieve my goals, does that say that I'm realistic and honest? I would say no, it doesn't. When you say I'll never achieve all of my goals or or I'm not the best dancer, does that show you're being realistic about your shortcomings? You're being honest. Okay. Would you add realistic? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Is that important to, to, to be realistic? Yes. Very realistic and honest about myself. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. It's your turn, Rhonda. Well, I know you, you teach, you know, before our previous conversation, you told me that you teach, um, you know, boys and girls, mm-hmm. break dancing, other forms of mm-hmm. dancing, you know, when you're showing that you have high standards and you, you're mo- which, you know, and that you, you're humble and you're realistic and honest, are you being a mm-hmm. good role model for you, for the young people that are in your lives looking up to you? Yeah, that's a high value to be Is a good Is that important role model. to you to be a good role model? Yeah, yeah big time. Put, put put that down. A good 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 role model. Okay. Uh, I had another one here. I hope it didn't it slipped out of my brain. Let's see. Uh, 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 oh 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 yeah. Would you say that that you're accountable, or you're? Uh, yeah, definitely. Is Absolutely. that important? Yes. Put yes. Uh, put that down. Uh, and which statement for the accountable part? Which well, when you say I'm not stuff? the best dancer, I'll never achieve my goals. Uh, you're you're criticizing yourself rather than blaming the world. You're saying the oh. buck stops here. Right, right. Accountable, yeah. Um, uh, it's and and uh, and and non-blaming, and that that's what you achieved when you were crying about your wife. Mm. Uh, that, that that's a kind of a spiritual spiritual piece mm-hmm. um, so we've got seven things now if we were doing a real uh, therapy session on feeling insecure or inadequate or inferior or whatever we'd mm-hmm. do it in more detail we'd probably have a list of uh, 20 things or 30 things sure. that your uh, self-criticisms and feelings of insecurity show about you that's 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 positive and awesome and so the the question here is then uh if, if you press that magic button that Rhonda referred to and all these uh, self-criticisms suddenly disappear and you go into a state of euphoria instantly with no effort then all of these beautiful things about you are going to go down the drain along with your negative thoughts and feelings. Mm-hmm. And why, why would you want to do that? Right, right. I wrote a, I wrote a sentence here where it says, my criticisms reflect my values, you know, and yeah. like who I am as a person. It's like when I interview people, I always ask them, what's your strength and weakness, right? And then it's like, it's a trick question because it's really the same thing, you know? Yeah. And it's like all of my weaknesses, they're really just my strengths, but gone overboard, like too much accountability and trying to be right. too much of a good role model and too humble, I love that. you know? I love and that. So, yeah, and so I think that's that's what's happening with me. It just, it pours over, you know, and it's like, okay, Brian, like, 
chill out a little bit with, the, you know. Yeah. With this, so. So do you want to see if you can chill out a little in the way you talk back to some of these thoughts? Maybe we can kind of lower yeah. the thoughts down a little bit. Yeah, sure, sure. So what, you want to take the attack again, Rhonda? Do you think we're ready? Okay, Brian, are you ready to get another attack? <laughs> I'm, I'm never ready, but let's go. Like, Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go back to the original one. Um, mm -hmm. Brian, sorry to tell you this but you know you suck at dance and that makes you a worthless individual mm. yeah um you know what for my dance i feel like i have a very high expectation of myself and sometimes i'm gonna meet that in life and then sometimes i'm not gonna meet that in in life to equate that to me being a a, a worthless individual is not fair to myself or, or anybody else in my life. And Brian, who won that? The negative thought, the thought that was attacking you or the response? Could you take your hand away from your mouth? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, no, no, for sure. That was cool. Uh, I think um, I felt more confident with that one. You know, um, I definitely feel more confident, you know, like more like a resolve, you know? Yeah. So do you think you won that? Big or small? I feel like I wanted bigger than before. <laughs> yes. I thought so too. You, I, you, I what about more. huge? Did you feel like you want it huge? I I don't know. I don't know. You know, maybe I, I feel like I want it solid. Like it was a solid win. <laughs> okay. I feel like I have a ways to go with practice to, to win it huge, but I feel like it was very solid. Well, do you want to keep going until we can get it to huge? Or, is solid yeah, or, or maybe it's good enough right yeah, now. Or is solid good enough right now? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think I feel we, like we could do one. Let's do one more. Let's do one more because I like this. It's definitely getting better. If we have the time for it, we can do one oh, more. Oh, we do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is great stuff. It's fun, yeah, let's fun do for it. us. Rewarding. Yeah. And uh, and we're we're pushing you to learn uh, advanced calculus here on the fly. Uh, I, I love it, guys. I I love it. Okay. I really love it. So, do you want to hit me with that and see if I can? Let's do a role reversal. Why don't yeah. Why don't I hit you with it, Rhonda, okay. and let Brian watch us? That's another. Uh, okay. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, yeah. that would be great. Sure. Uh, could I talk to you for a minute, Brian? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to upset you here, you know, front of a large podcast audience, <laughs> but uh, you you know it's a fact of the universe, and I'm not exaggerating to to say that you you suck at break dancing, which you're trying to teach kids. So you're you're kind of a fraud as well as a failure, and this makes you a, a, a worthless human being. Other than that, you're okay. Ouch, Brian, that really hurts. That's that's harsh, you know. I know I, I have really high expectations for myself. Sometimes I meet them, sometimes I don't meet them. Um, but what I do know, I have a huge impact on a lot of kids' lives. I'm super proud of that. And I've been a dancer for 20 years. I'm a great dancer and I am a really great teacher. What I'm not really good at is turning off that voice in my head that, that, that keeps attacking me. I'm getting better at that. But what I'm going to say for you right now is, you know, just leave me alone with your negative thoughts. I don't, with your negative thoughts about me, I, they're, they're not valid and I'm tired of listening to them. Great. Who won, Rhonda? I won. <laughs> Big or small? <laughs> I think that was large, but not huge. What did you think, Brian? No, I definitely think she won uh, for sure. I really like what she said is like, and you were saying too earlier, David, about not turning like what I'm not good at is not turning this you off, that voice off. You know, that's really yeah, that's that was powerful. Hey, yeah. let's hit so let's hit that. David with it and hear what he has to say. I'll just I'll just quote Jesus in his sermon on the mount. <laughs> okay, but don't swear. <laughs> Jesus didn't swear. <laughs> Brian, you want to hit David? Um, yeah. Oh, I also I wanted to say too, David, uh, what you said about being fraudulent and all this, I think you put it in, in perfect terms, you know? So I love that you, I love that example. That was really good. Cause that was like really deep. I think the deepest. Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't comment. Yeah. On that. 
Yeah, and then Rhonda, how you responded, I, I really like that. So, um, yeah, I'll I'll go ahead and uh, hit you, David. Um, so yeah, Brian. Um, yeah, you're you're a great guy, man. Overall, but, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, don't thank me too soon, man, because your dancing <laughs> is just you know you're you're a fraud. You shouldn't be teaching, and there's other people that deserve to be doing what you do, like. Well, you know, there's so much truth in what you're saying, big guy, and uh, that's absolutely right. Uh, there, there are a lot of people who can dance a lot better than I can, probably beat me in a competition. Uh, but I've, I'm, I'm proud of what I've learned both about dancing and what I've achieved and what I've learned about teaching. And, you know, I've really touched the hearts of a lot of kids uh, and uh, they, they they don't seem to to care so much uh, about uh, you know how good I am on a zero to a thousand rating or Olympic stature or, or whatever. They, they 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 seem to care about uh, the fact that I care about them and that I'm making a, a changes in their life. And uh, I, I'm I'm pretty proud of myself for what I've done, and I'm proud of myself for the way I've grown with with my wife too and 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 I I made a lot of mistakes today uh, I'll always make a lot of mistakes I'll always fall short that's that's a part of life but I I also have a tremendous amount amount to be proud of and I I'd say my greatest uh, shortcoming is just listening to your your constant uh, criticisms, but it, it keeps me from getting lonely. You're always there chattering on my shoulder, <laughs> pointing out my, my shortcomings and where I need to learn and grow. And if you want to do that, you can just, just go go ahead and, and do that. But I, I just want, you know, I've kind of decided to start start loving myself as much as I, I love my wife. And unfortunately, that doesn't leave an awful lot of room for your for your constant put-downs. Yeah, I love that, Dave. I just had a thought. Something you and Rhonda did. It was it was beautiful. It's like it's almost like you use the five secrets on yourself. Yes, you know? yes, and right. Yeah, you use it on yourself, and you, it's almost like you take it in and you and you just give yourself a hug. And and I yeah. love that you started mm. with with like disarming and agree and say, hey, like yeah, I acknowledge because that's actually something I'm learning in, in, in my own personal therapy now. It's just to like acknowledge what I'm feeling, acknowledge that voice first, that person that's talking to you, like, okay, you are there. And Hey, what you're saying is, is there's some validity to it but yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. See, yeah. Just having empathy. See, that's, that's myself. huge. What you said now, and then we've got to yeah. kind of break this off, but it, it, sure. you, you just made a really important philosophical point. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the world of, five secrets and relationships and the world of cognitive therapy are the, the opposite of each other. Mm -hmm. Like in cognitive therapy, you point out all the distortions in your thoughts, like all or nothing thinking and overgeneralization. But if right. you say that to someone else, it, you'll, you'll just get a fight on your hands. Right. It's, and, yeah, and, exactly. And, and, and so it's like matter and antimatter, but the bridge between individual, like cognitive therapy, like what we mm -hmm. were doing just now, and the interpersonal therapy with the five secrets, the bridge is what you just said. The acceptance paradox and the disarming technique are the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's the connection between these two apparently opposite worlds. Right. And and when you're uh, the acceptance paradox is is using the disarming t t technique on, on yourself. Say, say to me, you know, David, you're you're really kind of worthless. David, you're really worthless. <laughs> I know there's nothing about me that can't be improved. I have so many faults. It would take us a long time to count them all. Everything about me is a little bit off. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You know what's great about it? What is that? My students don't care. My cat doesn't care. My wife doesn't care. Uh, we have a new kitty, and if I just pet her and pet her stomach, she just purrs like crazy, and my students purr too. I just show them some love and teach them and some caring. Um, so if you want me to be worthless, I'll, I'll be worthless, but I'm just <laughs> going to be loving every minute of my life. I love that. I Isn't love that neat? And just yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, just the same thing is is you know pure acceptance. 
Um, yeah, just accepting yourself. Man, that's huge, guys. I, I appreciate that because that was yeah, something that really hit me a lot. Yeah, go ahead. Brian, it's really, it's really awesome if the last person to do the external, to attack the negative thought is the person who has the negative thought. Mm, okay. So I'm wondering if that would be okay for you to give it one final chance. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, go for it, Rhonda. I'll, I'll be the observer. Do your magic. Okay, Brian, sorry to tell you this again. You know, you're kind of a fraud. You say you're a dancer, but you've never won a competition. And also, you know, to honestly, you kind of suck at dance, really. And that Man. pretty much makes you worthless. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's very, very, very difficult to hear because I value dance so much, you know, and I work so hard to be uh, the best that I can be dancing, teaching. And it's true. I haven't won a lot of competitions, you know what I mean? I haven't done uh, some things that other people uh, may have done. And that feels, uh, it does feel sad, you know, it does feel uh, difficult to to swallow those different peels. Um, I think at the same time, uh, you know, with that, I want to accept that about myself and I want to be able to say, okay, that's that's true. And at the same time, I want to be able to say that I can be proud of the work that I've done and what I'm doing right now with my own physical fitness and what I'm doing, my wife and what I'm doing, my kids and things like that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, there's never going to be a end game to this. You know, what I do have an issue with is listening to this negative voice over and over. If you weren't there, I'll probably be on a different, on a different page. So <laughs> that's probably one of the biggest faults that I have, but no, I, you know, I can't defend that. Uh, but what I can say is, is take respect and honor in who I am and, and where I'm going and continue to set goals for myself. Oh my gosh. Who do you think won that one, Brian? I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you get to huge? I, you know, I feel like I got right on the cusp of huge, you know, it was, <laughs> it felt, it was right there. Right. Oh my. There. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll have you back uh, uh, another time. But uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's just I think we've we, we've gotten to know you, learned to to love you and admire you. Thank you. Guys. Already admiring you tremendously, and we really put you through the paces today. And <laughs> wow, no, you, I love uh, it. You uh, never cease to amaze. What was this experience like for you? Was there any? Tell us about the part you didn't like and the part you did like, and then we'll we'll say goodbye and uh, no, leave it in I the mean, hands of our listeners. I mean, man, I I I love the whole thing. You know, um, I love you already, David, because I'm like I've read all your stuff. Meeting you, bro, is like being a celebrity, man. Like this is a bucket list thing. I didn't know who Rhonda was, but after me, you, Rhonda, you're, you're, you know, much love for you. You know, I appreciate all the feedback you gave as well. Rhonda is awesome. Isn't she? You know, <laughs> Thank you. yeah, yeah, you really are. I appreciate how you got in there. Just the little things you say, you have those little things where it just comes in and it's just, it's excellent. So no, nah, I mean, it was great guys. I, I appreciate that you guys are giving this for free and all this information. Like so many people need to need to know it. As far as what I didn't like, I mean, not much. Of course, I wish we had two, three hours to just sit up and, you know, to talk and stuff. But I mean, you know, I, I loved it. Thank you guys for doing the examples as well. I thought that was really cool. Um, I didn't even know we were going to talk about the cognitive stuff, you know. I didn't uh, either. I'm glad that. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad that we touched that. I'm glad. There's that two dialogues cool. to change, the inner dialogue and the outer dialogue. Yes. yes. Uh, and they kind of help help each other. Well, the reason I w had wanted to get you on the show, or first I was just going to, it was going to be an Ask David was because you asked, how do you deal with anger in marriage? Mm. And because that's maybe the most important topic in the whole world or close to it. Yeah. Uh, I thought, man, th this would be a great Ask David question. And then when we had mm -hmm. the chance to to see your evolution and come on the show live, it was just a, a dream for, for us. And I just want to thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime, guys. Anytime. I, I yeah. love what you guys are doing. Yeah, I totally want to thank you, too. You know, you showed so much love and commitment to your wife. Oh, and then yeah. somehow we... <laughs> I bet yeah. she's going to be proud of you. I maybe maybe, oh. maybe she can write us an email for the show notes or you can tell us, you know, what she has to say and I can yeah. add it to the yeah. show notes. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, send me a, if you can, I don't know if it's possible to send me a, a copy of this, you know? Yeah, the audio, be, we can send it to you. Yeah, yeah. that'll be really cool. So then you can, can listen to it. it right away. You won't have to wait until it's published in five or six weeks. And then if there's anything you want to add, I, I can add it to the show notes. Can you do that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Giving you a virtual hug. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and this won't be the last time you hear from me. I'll definitely keep you guys updated and stuff. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Have a so good day. Guys. Much love, guys. Yeah. Much love Have a good bye. One. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye, guys. This has been another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast. For more information, visit Dr. Burns website at feelinggood.com, where you will find the show notes under the podcast page. You will also find archives of previous episodes and many resources for therapists and non-therapists. We welcome your comments and questions. If you want to support the show, please share the podcast with people who might benefit from it. You could also go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. I am your host, Rhonda Borowski, the director of the Feeling Great Therapy Center. We hope you enjoyed this episode. I invite you to join us next time for another episode of the Feeling Good Podcast.